I haven't done a video for a while because basically I don't want to buy any more equipment because all the equipment I tend to end up buying ends to end up either in the loft or in the workshop and I can't move the equipment now. Um, so the idea now is to try and actually go through some of the, the gear I've got and uh, make videos on that. I've got bought so much stuff on eBay in the last sort of 10 years that it's um, it's become a bit of a problem really. I can't move for equipment. Um, so this evening I'm going to go through this uh, Quad FM4 that I bought. I don't know if you remember this. It was probably about five or six years ago I bought this FM4 and uh, restored it and changed a few capacitors in it I think and uh, did a modification to the uh, audio output stage to uh, just see how well it was performing. Now these tuners are notoriously unreliable, be mainly because the internal battery leaks and it corrodes the board away, and actually can damage the uh, processor in the in the in the uh, as the as a result of all the acid leaking out. Um, so if you've got one of these tuners stored in the loft somewhere, you need to sort of if you're planning on selling it or using it again, you need to you need to use it every now and then, and you might even be worth taking the cover off just to check the battery isn't. Uh, rotting the board away and it's pretty straightforward there's only two screws on the back of these tuners take the take the cover off um, and if you're not going to use it get someone or remove it yourself remove the the uh, four and a half volt battery uh, before it does damage to the board which this this unit has suffered and uh, you know at least it's viable for someone if they want to use it in the future if they're going to sell it on uh, you can actually get a new battery fitted and it's uh, going to work but if it's uh, if the acid is leaked out and it's etched away at the board, these tunes are basically scrapped, which is a, such a shame because I'm not that keen on quad gear. Um, I think it's it's okay. The, I've got a quad 33 and a 405 amplifier, and yeah, they're all right. It's an amplifier. It's pretty good. But I actually got a bit of a soft spot for this tune now. Actually, um, I like the sound of it. Um, I like the look of it. I like the design. Uh, it's it's. I think it's actually quite a good tuner. I remember when I was working in the hi-fi shop, uh, a chap who was in the know, Bob Tomolsky, you probably might have heard of his name. Um, I was quite friendly with him and he he was he was actually um he's he died actually unfortunately about ten years ago, but he was quite big into uh in the early stages uh, days of electronics he was uh, had a, a couple of blogs on the internet and uh Type in Bob Tomolsky, you you'll see see his uh, reviews and things. And he was he was always a bit sort of put downy on these tuners. He always said that they were a bit deaf and uh, not not very sensitive. Uh, something I I sort of disagree with actually. I think this tuner is actually fairly sensitive. It's not super sensitive. It's not some sensitive like some of the the uh, sort of modern uh, or modern <laughs> the the pioneer. Uh, F91s and F90s of the day. It's not as sensitive as that, but it's a very good performing tuner. It does lack a few features like um, FM muting and things like that, but basically you're supposed to program your A quad owner doesn't tune. He goes in and he programs his presets and then he that's it. That's the end of it. You know, you, you don't use the tuning dial. Um, so this tune has undergone the uh, audio amplifier modification, which is basically, trans I think it was a 220 nan... Um, capacitor these tuners were designed to drive a hundred kilo ohm impedance but of course most people with these tuners won't be driving a quad preamplifier they'll be driving a, a japanese amplifier which is probably 47k uh, and therefore that capacitor was too low a value and that results in a uh, basically a, a low frequency roll off and it's it's significant it's if this tuner sounds without the modification it sounds very weak uh, on a Japanese amplifier, and I'm, as you know, I'm running on the Technics SUV505, which is a pretty basic uh, Japanese amplifier of its day. But I like these amplifiers, I like the look of them and, and the style, and they're, they're robust and they, they're, they're, the protection circuitry is quite good, which is what you want in, something in, a, in, a, in a workshop. So, basically, what I'm doing this evening is to show you that uh, if you think that FM is dead, I just want to show you. Uh, think again because this is connected up to my external area and I'm in the Grinstead um, I'm about four about 365 feet above sea level so I'm not the highest part of East Grinstead but I'm fairly high so East Grinstead is on the south southeast England if if you if you're not uh, familiar with uh, the UK um, 
Our nearest RF transmit, powerful RF transmitter is Rutum in Kent. Uh, and that's about line of sight, I'd say 25 miles, something like that. You can see it if you drive down the M25. And that does radio 1, 2, 3 and 4, and I think it does a few others. But uh, I'm going to scan through the frequencies this evening just to show you what it is. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scan through these frequencies and then I'm going to end the video of that. But I want to show you that if you think that FM is dead and, and, or dying, uh, I'm going to show you otherwise. Radio 2. Radio 3. Radio 4 You can see it's trying to pick up something there That's capital Radio one, Let's kiss. Classic FM. Not sure what that is. Might be Kent. No idea. Radio Sussex. As is that. No idea what that is. That might be Radio Jackie actually. No idea. No idea. Glory again, I know that. And that's it. So basically what that is to do is to prove that the FM band is still pretty active with FM channels. And you think if uh, Dab's taking over, it's mm, all right, it's it's getting there. But I don't think it's going to, it's going to be a long time before FM is actually dead. Uh, and this tuner is uh, proof of that. It's... Uh, still alive and kicking and I think it will be for some years yet because FM it does have its it does have its drawbacks with uh, signal to noise ratio and, and uh, intermodulation distortion actually someone pointed out that intermodulation distortion on the stereo tuner is a problem uh, but uh, FM tuner still sounds in my my mind or by my ears better than a dab radio but uh, so that's the quad FM4 thanks for watching